everyone, and welcome to the Fringe North podcast. My name is Caitlin Townsend, my pronouns are she and her, and I'm the project coordinator for this year's Fringe Festival. And I have with me today, Konica and Seath. Uh, Konica and Seath, would you like to take a moment to introduce yourselves and talk a little bit about the festival submission that you're submitting for this festival this year? Um, Konica, we'll start with you if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Konica, Konica Bello. Um, I am from Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, and Garden River Band, and I also go by Guige Gokwe, which roughly translates to Sky Woman. Um, this year's my first time participating in Fringe Festival. I've had opportunities prior and heard of it before, but this year just felt right to kind of take this opportunity with DJ C to break into this fringe scene and uh, show everybody what we've been kind of festering on and working with mentally in a creative way since this pandemic began. Yeah, and DJ Seath, would you like to introduce yourself as well? Absolutely, yes, my name is DJ Seath. Thank you for having me on. Um, I go by he, him, they, and them. Um, also from Boating, aka Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, and uh, been DJing for a uh, better part of 20 years now. And uh, yeah, I'm just really excited to be part of the Fringe Festival and to kind of share what we've been working on, Kanika and I. And uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much both for coming on. We really appreciate it. Uh, Miigwech. And would you like to tell us a little bit about uh, what category does your submission fall under? Um, so, like, <laughs> <laughs> certainly hip hop um yeah it's very poetic dj seath is a vinyl dj which is part of what i appreciate so much about his art and his craft is his brain works in a different way so what he did was he found a break that he really liked and it kind of made him think of me and the kind of content that i create so he sent it my way gave me a little idea of what he would like it to sound like and immediately it clicked there was already stuff going on in my life that I needed to write about and kind of digest. So when I got to hear the break that and the idea that he had for it, it all just flowed really naturally. And it felt really nice because it's been a long time since we were able to collaborate on anything new. So. Yeah, it's been a few years actually. Um, so it was really good to kind of get the dust off and like really get down to something. And uh, it just all kind of really came together really fast and, and really naturally, which I, I think is one of the big things I love to about working with Konica uh, over all these years, you know, we we just kind of click. And uh, I kind of know, you know, like, we kind of know each other, like we kind of sort of play off of each other's strengths in a really good way. So yeah, when I was listening to some records, I heard this one, which I happen to have two copies of and I was like, yo, Konica, what do you think of this? Like, maybe we could just double this up and like, you know, extend it out a little bit and like give you a little bit of a platform to kind of get some stuff off your chest. And, uh, and it was like, what, like a week and a half later, you had like a verse and a half written. And then, <laughs> and then we wrote the rest of it, like in the studio and, and just uh, cut the video and, and did the whole yeah. thing. So yeah, it was uh, serendipitous, you know, very serendipitous. <laughs> That's awesome to hear. Um, so Konica, if I can have a follow-up question on what you shared uh, with, uh, you had worded it, I think there, there was some stuff you were sorting through in your life that you wanted to write about. Um, so did you mind sharing a little bit with us about like uh, where you write from as a writer and, and kind of like the inspiration for this piece? Absolutely. So the inspiration for this piece is certainly um, emotional turmoil and life experiences. <laughs> It's a bit about introspection and kind of like looking deeper inside to find some maybe answers about, you know, where we could have done things a little bit differently to see a better outcome. Because it's not always about external factors being at play that cause us to feel a negative way. Sometimes it's something that we haven't really looked at in ourselves that like ends up playing out externally and causing us to you know, feel some kind of way about it, usually a negative type of way. So music usually comes from a very therapeutic, emotional place for me. I love that, that's wonderful. Um, and DJ Seath on the music end of things, uh, when you first, so you kind of kicked off this project by the sounds of it. Um, so I'm wondering like, what was it that inspired that first uh, line or, or sound that that came to mind that you then pulled Konica into this project from? Um, I've definitely been uh, uh, going through a lot of my older records and just finding um, different 
you know, loops and beats and this and that. And, uh, and this one just kind of jumped out at me as something that would just really fit well with what Konica does. Um, very, uh, you know, low tones and, and very, uh, almost, uh, like a menacing kind of sound to it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. And in, like, not to mention like, you know, some of my DJ heroes, they're always working with records primarily. Right. So I like to try to pattern myself around that as best I can and, and try to pay homage to, uh, all the DJs that came before me and, uh, you know, kind of blaze the trail for what it is that I do today. So, and, uh, Konica's always, always understood that and always respected that. And I've respected the heck out of her craft as well too, because she's so amazing at what she does. So when the opportunity came up and I heard the song and I, and I threw it to her and I said, Hey, you know, is this something you could write to, you know, when she came back and said, yeah, it was, you know, it was a good day. <laughs> it was, it was a really good feeling. So, yeah. That's awesome. Um, so had the, the whole piece had musically been written when Konica came on or did you write parts of the music? Like, did it, it did it shift in any way uh, based on her, the influence that her lyrics had? Absolutely, actually. Um, prior to us getting in the studio, um, I hadn't heard, like she, she had written out what she was going to uh, rhyme, but um, we didn't really have the chance to kind of like share audio back and forth because, you know, life gets hectic, especially in the COVID days, right? As we all know. Uh, but I was reading through it and I kind of got a little bit of an idea as to how I was going to pattern things out. And then when we got into the studio, uh, my idea for how it was going to go was totally different than what she had. So we spent a little bit of time working it out and, you know, I, I figured out, okay, you know, we got to go for this long here and that long there and, and just kind of came together around like a really good sound and, uh, and then did a few takes. And it was just kind of like almost like a, a mutual collage. Like I did, a, I did a little bit of the painting on the on the canvas. I handed it to her, and then she's like, "Okay, this looks like it might be a a deer," you know. So she started like adding the legs, and then she gave it back to me, and I gave it the horns, you know. And like it was like a back and forth kind of thing, right in right in the studio. So it was really cool. Yeah, yeah. that's. Sorry, go ahead, Kanika. No, I was gonna say yeah. That's one of my favorite things about the way we collaborate together is we can work from a distance, like we get each other's vibes, but the moment we're in the same room and he's got vinyl and I've got a pen and paper, we're able to just like, okay, I did this little bit. What do you think? How does it make you feel? What does it inspire you to do? And then he'll add his little bit. And yeah, we really get to flesh things out better in person. So, mm -hmm. you know, the whole entry that's going into Fringe Festival is pretty much just a, a documentary of our collaborating situation and how we work together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. That's one of the things that I found is coming up a lot in these different podcasts is that like co-creation pro process and like the coming together and how artists like feed off of each other um, and just how it makes like such a beautiful community um, as we're working on our different projects that in different areas of art that seems to be like the common thread regardless of if you're a playwright or um, if you do the acting if you do music like all these different pieces it's always that um, coming together in the co-creation process that just has that like beautiful com beautiful community aspect to it. Um, so I'm curious, cause you had shared that this wasn't your first project that you've worked on, but it has been a significant amount of time between your last project that you worked on together and this. Um, so how did you meet as artists and when did you first start collaborating in the past with each other? And like, how often have you worked together too? When did we meet as artists? <laughs> Over 10 years, I want to say about 10 years. Yeah, probably around that. Um, it was, uh, I would say probably about 2011, 2012 that we first met. And uh, it was, was it that Lop Lop show that Lop Lop show, that's right. And then yeah. I just was like, hey, can I plug my stuff into your setup? And you were like, sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was basically it. Again, very much a, kind of a co-creative process, but in a live setting, even you know, like that was that was. And, and I remember that day pretty well because that was the time when I was thinking, like, you know, this is definitely somebody who's not afraid to take risks. You know, that's not afraid to uh, be uh, vulnerable and be real, as even in public spaces. It doesn't like you, there's no on-off. You know, it's just that's that's Konica, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that was absolutely beautiful. And, you know, we kind of just played off of each other's strengths the first day we met, you know, <laughs> and just kind of felt each other out like in a live setting on this stage. And it was pretty wild. And then from there, we, um, what did we do after that? It was a couple, couple of years later, we got together and did a couple of uh, production recordings and stuff like that together. You did a few writings uh, to some of my beats and we did a little bit of recording here and there and we're floating it out here and there couple of live shows we did the rotary fest uh and uh you know just playing playing around here and there 
yeah before we like actually got to sit in the same room and like do some collaboration I'm pretty sure that it was just a couple of shows that like we didn't know each other but we both got put on the docket so like mm. either you were opening and then I was after you or I was opening and you were after me and we yep. just kind of ended up mm -hmm. <laughs> getting to know each other through that process and then yep. yeah actually sitting in the same room and like vibing out some vinyl and then when I when he would find a break that would inspire me to write something I'd say yeah that's the one let's loop that and see what we can do yeah, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. yeah. Yeah, I find that interesting that you were put kind of like in shows before you even knew each other, uh, like whoever was curating the lineup kind of recognized that you would pair up well uh, by the sounds of it, which is kind of neat mm -hmm. to just uh, see that it's it it's just like a, a natural thing, I guess, for the two of you to be in combination with each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really definitely. Cool. And uh, definitely shouts to the entire like, uh, you know, hip hop scene in our community as well, too, because it's a very communal feeling, you know, being able to uh, get into the same room as one another and, and just get together around shows and around a good feeling. And uh, and uh, yeah, it's just overall really good vibes, I think. Uh, and not just the hip hop scene, but like just the music scene as a whole, too, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. You know, we've had our fair share as well of uh, playing alongside, you know, bands from like indie to metal, punk, you know, all kinds, you know. Uh, awesome. singer songwriters and then all of a sudden we come up with our MC thing and you know <laughs> yeah. I'm here to mix it up a bit <laughs> yeah, absolutely yeah. that's awesome so I'm curious um, having worked together prior to the pandemic and then working on a project during the pandemic what did you find different about uh, the collaboration process in a pandemic and kind of like uh, this shift to not always being able to be uh, together in person as often as we used to be in the past did that change how you approach this particular song or uh, were you able to kind of like like what difference did that make to working together uh, compared to before well I feel like even with regards to like pre-pandemic or current pandemic like we just always work around each other's availability mm -hmm. so like we we're just the type of people that don't force it if, if we if we force it, it's probably going to turn out to be crappy. So we're just like, okay, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for me, we'll find a way to line it up. And until we're able to actually sit in a room together and just like hammer it out in one session, we'll shoot messages back and forth and kind of feel things out. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah. And I, I, like to speak to what Konica's saying too, um, we've always had that patience built in. I think just mm -hmm. by nature of what we do, there's always a built-in patience that comes with that. It never comes fast. It never comes easy. It never comes cheap. You know, I'm sure, <laughs> right? Um, you know, and and that, like, for me, at least, my own experience, you know, um, digging for records, you don't always find the record that you're looking for, but sometimes you find the record you didn't know you wanted, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that that ethos and that mentality <laughs> carries forward to, like, the creative side and, and the artists that I choose to work with, like Konica, who also espouse that same value of, like, you know, it's not necessarily about what you want it to be. It's about what it's going to be. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And how and how it's going to come to you is going to be on its own terms, you know? So it's not something to be rushed, no. That's awesome. Um, so what is your favorite part of working with each other and the favorite um, element? Because every... Uh, every artist that you work with is unique in some way and and we play off of each other in different ways right so I'm curious as to what do you see has like this the greatest strength I guess of your particular coming together as artists I would have to say that uh one of the greatest uh, uh things that I look most forward to when I'm working with Konica is just like it's like being able to catch up with my little sister you know like maybe we've been apart for a little while but as soon as we get back in that room it's just like all that time apart was just you know just cut right out and brought back together like just like the last time we were together and like we're just catching up we're sharing like stories like oh there was this thing I went to like you know or like I saw my buddy or uh you know my my uh my sister was in town and this and that you know just sharing stories and and connecting on a human level you know what I mean and that uh, allows us to just feel that much more comfortable when we get down to working and it's just like and it's not even a question sometimes like it, you know we get together we're like chatting and schmoozing and then next thing you know we're doing like some serious work and then back to chatting and schmoozing you know what I mean and that's what I love the most about working with Konica it's like a friend you know like it's it's really I, I wouldn't even call it a working relationship it's like a friendship you know what I mean that's really it so I would have to agree 100% from the first time that we really like 
hung out and talked music. It went back and forth between the schmoozing and talking music and work and fun stuff. Yeah. And it yeah. just comes really naturally, like a sibling relationship. Really nice to see how like, I adore the way that his brain just is constantly going and finding beats and breaks and different ways to like mix and match things because that's like what my brain's doing, but in like this, in the, the storytelling and like describing what I'm feeling and seeing type of way. So when he's able to put a beat together or even like however long his instrumentals are and it tells a story, oftentimes it's a story that I can tell verbally mm-hmm. and like they just go together very well. So yeah, our energies, they're very fluid, very comfortable. It just vibes extremely naturally. So yeah, I would have to say DJ Seep is one of my favorite people to work with. There's not one particular favorite thing about working with him. <laughs> oh, thanks, sis. <That's> awesome. <laughs> fantastic. Um, so I'm curious with this piece in particular, what's your favorite part of like um, how it turned out or like your favorite element of the song? I don't mm. want to spoil it, but the thing at the end. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know Conoco knows mean, what I'm talking about. <laughs> the end of it and how it all came together with the energy. By the time we were like getting towards the end of the song and completion of the recording, we were so in it. <laughs> like we were just like right yeah. in the mood of it and the vibe of it. And it just came together really naturally, as things tend to do. Yes. So yeah, it was, yeah, it was really good. Yeah. That's fantastic. So hear that folks stick into the end because it's the best part (laughs) um so uh like speaking a little bit more to our audience now um how like what do you hope that festival goers take away from this song um and like what is the i guess the heart of what you're hoping for them to get out of it Mm. same with most of my songs i'll say just a little bit of um Emotional validation and spiritual growth is typically like the core value, core essence of my songs is a lot of the things I write about are extremely difficult things that we go through and we often feel like we're alone in going through. So I like to write about those and let people know like you're valid, you're totally okay with thinking either these crazy dark things or these naive amazing things like all of it, it's totally beautiful and acceptable and you you need that and to be validated in that in order to grow spiritually so this is a dark one and it's going to hopefully help people understand like this pandemic was necessary Mm. for all of us it's all part of the human experience you know i think that's really what we're trying to bring forward is just uh you know um uh, another facet of the human experience really so that's amazing and it sounds really exciting and i am excited to dive into your song and to get to hear it for part of our festival this year. Um, Just sounds awesome. Um, From the artist side of things and being artists that are participating in this year's festival, what do you hope to get out of the festival this year for yourselves? Oh, goodness. Um, For me, it's just the fact that I can say I've finally done it because I have a lot of anxiety around starting new things. The first time I do something is always the most nerve wracking. So now that I've done this, I'm looking forward to future years and hopefully doing bigger sets with more to offer for the audience. It's just, it's an opportunity for me to grow and to expand my audience. Hopefully that people, hopefully people connect and they feel like choosing to pursue more of what I have, I have to offer. <laughs> mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. And I mean, for me, I think, uh, you know, what I'm looking to get out of the, the festival is just a chance to connect with people, really. Um, you know, just put it out there and, uh, you know, the, the people that, that vibe with it, you know, hopefully they enjoy it. And that's really all it's about, you know. Yeah, well, thank you both so much for your time today. And to our audience, you can come to the festival. It runs from the 19th of August to the 22nd with a sneak preview on the Wednesday evening, the night before, which is the 18th. Um, come purchase tickets and uh, support Konica and DJ Seath and uh, buy, yeah, buy a ticket to their show. Uh, before we do a final close off, is there anything that you would like the audience to know about this piece or your journey as artists in particular? Mm-hmm. What do you think, Seath? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess just kind of like, I guess closing words kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, just uh, 
keep an eye on us. You know, we're always doing something, you know, and, uh, you know, we like to surprise people with little things here and there. Uh, we're on Instagram. Uh, Konica is Konica Music. And uh, I'm uh, under DJ Seath. And uh, you can always check out just, you know, some of the stuff we've done in the past. We got some videos and that kind of thing up, too, if you're into, you know, what you hear at the festival. And, uh, you, you know, we both got some music out, that kind of stuff there, too. It's all on Bandcamp. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. Yeah. So, Any final thoughts from you, Konica? That's about it. I that's just it. hope that people really enjoy that the piece that we're doing this year. It's a little bit on the edgier side, darker side of things, but it is a good one. Mm -hmm. Thank you both for your time today and thank you audience for watching and participating and come support the festival this August and we hope to see you all there. Thank you for your time. Miigwech, merci and gracias and we'll see you all at the festival. Bye. Thank you for watching our podcast. Merci, miigwech, gracias. If you like what we're doing, you can support Fringe North and the artists involved in this year's festival financially so that we can continue this work. Visit www.fringenorth.ca to find out more.